Welcome back to another M Creator tutorial series. Uh, today what we're going to be working on is learning how to make custom crops. We'll be starting with the blocks today and then moving on to the procedures and such. Taking a look at the block, uh, what we have is our texture for our block itself and we also have one for a item which we'll be using for the actual item texture so it's not a 3D model. So this is basically what you'll need to set up is these two textures. You'll also want it on a cross model, that's the one that the saplings use and you want it to be set to cut out. So once you've done that, uh, you can go ahead and set the values as seen on the screen here for the hitboxes. This seem to work pretty well for the game. Um, I haven't experienced any problems with it. And then you want to go ahead and set your display name, set your material type to plant, and then you stick it under any basic uh, creative tab. You also want your hardness and resistance set to zero and you want to be able to walk through the block. So that's all the settings on that side and then we want the uh, sound to be plant. Everything else can be changed on the screen. So once you've done that, uh, we want to make sure that the block will update randomly. So you check that box there and then under the properties down below, uh, what we have is the color on the map. You want that set to plant and then you want the um, piston to destroy it and entities to be able to walk through. So those are the settings that you want there. And then we'll cover the procedures in a little bit. Um, it doesn't have any MBT data and you can move on to the triggers, which it does have a tick update, which we'll cover in a little bit. Uh, lastly, um, we'll go ahead and cover the um, procedure for the placement condition. So basically what's going on here is it's going to test for all these things. We're testing if it's on dirt of some sort. So this is the vanilla tag for dirt. Um, basically has all the dirt and grass blocks. And then we're basically using a tag here under our own mod namespace so we can specify um, what we want it to break if there's a block next to it. So in this case, I want to break it if there's water next to it. So we're going to basically put all the different liquids into this tag here. And as you can see, that's the tag itself. All right, so moving on, uh, that's basically it. It's just testing for all the directions up, left, right, and forward and backwards. Uh, moving on to the bone meal properties, we have um, couple properties we needed to enable it and then we're going to set a random uh, local variable to be basically between 1 and 100 and then we're going to test if that value is equal to or less than 45 and that will give us the same uh, pro chance as saplings for bone meal so we'll basically just returning that value as a logic value once we've done that, uh, we can go ahead and set up this procedure. Uh, we, All the procedures will be automatically provided, but it's running on server side. And then we're going to go ahead and run a random number. This is going to cycle between all our IDs here. So one, two, three, or four. And then we'll be able to go ahead and run our variance based on that particular thing. Uh, I'll cover the variance in a little bit. So the other thing that we have is our update tick. So we'll cover that quickly. And basically what it's doing is it's going to run on server side again. And then we're going to basically set a value here. So this is the value that we're going to set for um, basically the script. It's our light level. And what we're doing is we're basically running the same procedure as the um, bone meal uh, condition and then we're running the same script as the bone meal success procedure so everything else is taken care of through the script um, so these are the two conditions that you'll have to or procedures that you have to put in for these two blocks here everything has uh, comments so you'll be able to easily find uh, what things are supposed to be for what and what they do and all that other stuff variables are also named pretty um, self-explanatory for what they are for. All right, so that's everything. Generation properties, there's nothing here, so we can move on. Uh, 
you will need something to basically generate these saplings with. So either a recipe or maybe when they break a vanilla block or um, if it's your own sapling or your own leaves and stuff like that, you might be able to drop that on a random tick update. But um, the important thing is you're going to need something to break it. This is just a quick uh, example of basically um, me breaking uh, oak leaves and then we're able to drop the sapling that way. Uh, this doesn't actually drop with the thing. You would have to override the properties for that and I tried and it was just too complicated for me. So um, I just moved on to uh, adding something like that. And that's our procedure here. So what we're going to do is if you want to expand this particular procedure, you need to basically go ahead and increase this value. So add another if else statement. And then you want to duplicate this part here or shrink it depending on how many variants you have. And then you want to set that value to the next number up and then add the value over on the random number for the maximum number. And then you want to set your variant to that uh, particular call procedure. So once you've done that, we can take a look at the call blocks. Now there's two different variants. There is one for um, single trees, which are not really designed for double saplings and stuff like that. And the other one is for double saplings. So the first one we have is our block that for sapling. And then we have our tag for valid growth. I have air in this particular procedure, but you can also add leaves or other things that might get in the way. It's going to be one block above the actual ground so it's not going to really matter for grass or anything like that but you might want to add some ex exceptions and then we have our structure our, our structure offsets x and z so this will allow us to offset the structure on the x or z axis uh, negative values subtractive subtract it ne to the east or you know like the negative values and then there's also one for offset. So all this is basically taken consider into consideration. There's also your structure size. So all those will basically follow the same map as your structure size. So if you shift one, you should probably shift the other. And then you have your structure size, which is the same value that you see when you save your structure. Other than that, you just have to update all the particular blocks for your structure itself so once you save your structure you need to update all those rotations and everything else is taken into consideration so you can basically just plop every plop the script down and it will do everything else for you so the other thing is the double double sapling uh, this is a little bit different the only difference is this particular part right here uh, this one is basically going to test if there is a a few other saplings in a certain area and if that's the case then it's going to basically grow um, this will vary depending on uh, the mechanics there is a little bit of um, a difference right here where the uh, particular block is uh, testing for all of the um, conditions so basically this is an updated version these are all the different rotations you would have to adapt to uh, you might need if depending on how you want to set up your rotations and stuff like that if you you'll have to set up different instances of these particular blocks I'll cover that in a little bit but I want to show basically what uh, the system looks like in game all right so that's basically the system that we have here is just the structure size so we'll go in game in just a second and I'll show you how it works. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the structure size first. So these are the structure size that you'll basically want uh, to put into your structure size itself. Um, these basically where it says structure size, that's the one that you're going to want to do. If we change the thing, you're still going to need your, your um, what are these things called? The structure voids, which allow you to basically replace uh, allow priority for blocks. So every one of these structures has those structure voids. These are again are the structure sizes that we uh, I used in the script and it works perfectly fine. So we can go ahead and use that. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and place a couple of these saplings down and we'll just see how they basically grow. Single ones are a little bit easier to grow. So we just basically do it until it happens and it will 
automatically placed in that particular location. Uh, we can go ahead and place a double sapling. Now this might uh, be a little bit different. So sometimes they will grow single and sometimes it will grow double. So we can go ahead and grow another one over here. We'll take a, another look at see if we can't get it to basically grow. So that one grew a double tree instead and we can try to grow another one here. So I'm going to set the game rule uh, game roll for random tick speed um, not game mode game rule uh, random tick speed and we'll set this to a thousand so it instantly grows. So in this case it was offset because the condition was uh, for the double plants is a little bit off. I'll show you how to fix that just right now. So let's go ahead into M Crater and we'll take a quick look at how that's going to be um, fixed. So again, this is basically the thing we can automatically grow a regular tree as well and it will automatically update as well. So like that, so you can see that. All right, let's quickly go into M Crater and then I'll show you how to fix that one issue. Uh, we can create a variant of the double um, double trees for basically making the condition that is under the thing. So we'll take a look at this particular one right here and we'll go ahead and open that up. And we can go ahead and go down to here and then we can go ahead and see all the different variants. Uh, we can go and set the particular Variant. This is the default one with uh, all the pluses for adding. Uh, the difference between this is the location where the saplings are located, right? So you will have to offset test and offset your position for your structure. So basically this one is going to be a little bit different compared to the one that's currently in. Same with this one. This is the opposite corner of the regular one. So I think that's possibly the one that we added. So what you want to do is you want to basically go ahead and shift the structure uh, to its certain location. Uh, you can do that by basically just playing around with the offset. You might need to offset it a certain direction. If you see a negative, then most likely you need a negative for that way or a positive, one of the two. If you want to test a particular specific a uh, particular proce procedure for a variant. What you can do is you can go ahead and set your ID like you, I showed you before. Set th both of these random values to five, so, or to that ID. Um, basically what that will allow you to do is run that particular instance all the time. So again, if you wanted to run this particular procedure, then what we would go ahead and do is set up our instances, play around with our variables here for our offset until we get something that is in the same location as the actual plant itself. So again, you can set both of these to the same number and it will only run that particular procedure regardless. Uh, there's another one in here that should actually control the random, I can't remember which one, but uh, for this, you can basically go ahead and just set this same value to the thing. Once you're finished, you can go ahead and set it back to the normal ID system from your range and that will allow you to test a particular instance one at a time. So again that's pretty much it for the uh, tutorial. There's not much other things to cover. I've covered all the things. We'll be expanding this uh, tutorial series into an actual series but hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.